Hi everyone, Taya here from Quilting Delights and it's a wonderful Sunday afternoon and I am going to work on my quilt project. I wanted to introduce it to you and give you some helpful hints on starting. We will be adding three additional videos for quilting the individual blocks and how to do the borders. But for today, I just want to take a few minutes and thank you for joining us. If you're watching this, it's because you have a BSR compatible ruler work attachment set from us and we want to give you some really great instruction on how to use it. We're going to use all three of the discs that came with the set and we will show you that in the next video. But for today, let's get our quilt top made and get everything prepared and ready to go. All right, you can see in the background that we have, we originally made a black with jewel tone quilt because those are the colors that I tend to go towards. But it's not as good for this kind of a quilting project because it is dark colors and it's hard to see for tracing and it's hard to um, see for quilting. So I made a second one that everyone is just raving about. They love the quilt that's behind me, but they like the one that we've done for this project even more. So this is a two color quilt and it doesn't have a name. It's just called the Ruler Work Quilting Primer Number 1. And it has a lot of really nice elements to it. It has 12 inch squares. It has two and a half inch squares that finish at two inches. These are 12 and a half that finish at 12. And the borders are set up and the sashing is set up to do some really fun quilting. So that's how we're gonna that's how we're gonna start. And today I want to go through how to prepare your fabrics when you're working on a project like this and give you a couple of weeks to get everything done so that when we sit down next time you're ready to start the actual stitching project. I know for me that I like doing all the prep work and then the first stitch is always the hardest one to get down on the quilt. Once I get that first stitch in, I'm just gung-ho. Okay, so we're going to start out with the pattern which you all have and we sent this via email. If you did not receive this, we did have some um, emails that bounced. Just give us a call and or email us at info at quiltingdelights.com and we'll be happy to get this to you. The pattern that we emailed you includes six pages plus nine separate designs that are 12 inches in size. You're going to print all of these, but I want to talk about, real quick, I want to talk about page two of the pattern. So because these patterns are bigger than eight and a half by 11, you have to print them off in what is called poster, poster mode or tile mode. So we've given you a screenshot and here's the thing. You must have Acrobat Reader, Adobe Acrobat Reader, which is a free download on your computer in order to print poster and tile. So we've given you the information on how to do that. If you need help, please call us. We're at the shop Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, which is West Coast, and we are happy to help you with this. We have Adobe Acrobat Reader only. This is a free program. You don't have to purchase it, but it allows you then to print in tile format. So you're gonna print these off. Um, my suggestion is you print the pattern first, and um, don't worry about printing the quilting designs yet. And you're going to go ahead and make your quilt according to the pictures and the fabric cuts and everything that are on here. We've double checked these to make sure that they're correct. But um, of course, if you find an error or something that we can do better, we're always open to suggestions. But this will give you the cutting instructions for the two-tone um, quilt that we've got here in a gray and wine color. Okay, so we're going to uh, cut all of our fabrics, and then I want to make sure, one thing that I do all the time, when I'm cutting my fabrics, I actually make my binding, and I put it in a Ziploc bag and mark it. I can't tell you the number of times that I've gone back to put binding on a quilt, and the fabric has gotten used up in something else. So it's really a smart idea to go ahead and do your binding when you have your quilt top made, and make sure you have enough. That way, if there are any dye lot issues, um, you don't have to worry about that. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about how to prepare the fabrics. So when you're, when you're working with cottons, and you can use batiks, but I would suggest for this project, if you are just starting to learn how to machine quilt with rulers, 
that you stay with cottons. Batiks have their own um, set of rules and we'll cover that a little bit in the quilting process, but it's just going to be easier if you can work with cottons. I would like you to consider doing a tone on tone or something with very, very low volume printing and design so that we can actually see the quilting, not the fabric. This quilt needs to focus on the quilting, not the fabric. And then I used a beautiful Maywood Studios um, wine color for the sashing and the borders. Um, we have a huge selection of Maywood Studios. If any of you need fabric kits, would like us to put a kit together for you, you can tell us what tones and what colors you'd like, and we can get these sent out to you. Shipping is free. And if you mention that you saw this on our video, then we will, um, we will give you a 10% discount on your purchases for supplies and for your um, fabrics. Um, if you're going to take advantage of that 10% discount, just email us what you'd like and or call us and we'll help you with that. Let's assume that you've got all of your fabrics ready and um, you're ready to get started. First thing you're going to do is you're going to spray, you're going to use some kind of a spray to pre-shrink the fabrics. I like Mary Ellen's Best Press, that's my favorite, but I also can tell you on smaller projects, we've done um, several um, smaller projects, I will actually use Terial Magic to make the fabric as stiff as possible. The stiffer it is when you're doing your quilting, the easier it is to get the quilting to lay down where you want it to go. So there is also, uh, so Terial Magic makes it like a board, you cannot pretty much stand it up on the side of the road. Um, Mary Ellen's Best Press makes it, uh, adds the sizing back in and makes it stiffer. But there's also a new Mary Ellen's Best Press. It's called Mary Ellen's Best Press Number no. 2. And it is stiff, it makes the fabric stiffer than Mary Ellen's Best Press, but not as stiff as Terial Magic. So we now have three different layers, three different levels of stiffness that we can get into our fabrics. I like them crisp. The other thing that, um, Making them crisp like that does is it makes it easier to trace the designs or uh, put your designs down on your fabric. So that's something to think about. And um, I keep 505 spray on hand. When we get our quilt top done and we're ready to start layering them, I 505 spray mine. I don't um, use safety pins. But sometimes people don't like the 505 basting spray, and so you can safety pin it as well. I don't have safety pins here because I don't use them, but 505 spray is my preference. I also have a mister bottle, and I use that for when I am marking with a water-soluble pen. I can use the mister instead of a spray bottle. It doesn't get as it quite as wet, but it does get it wet enough for me to um, get the blue marks out if I mismarked something and I need to get rid of that. Speaking of marking, let's talk about how to mark your quilt when you're ready. So you're going to, Mary Ellen's Best Press, get this all prepped and ready to go. And what you do to the front, you must do to the back as well. So um, if you're going to Mary Ellen's Best Press and get your fabric nice and stiff, you want to do the same thing to the back because at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, we want everything to shrink at the same rate so that it stays nice and clean looking and not all shriveled up. Um, I like that antique shriveled look on older quilts, but this is going to be more of a modern, uh, modern quilt, and we want it to stay nice and flat when it comes out of the water. All right, let's talk about marking tools. There are three marking tools that I like. One is the friction pens, and I know some people are concerned about um, the uh, when you iron them away, sometimes um, it'll leave a white mark. I don't seem to have an issue with that very often, and if I do, once I rinse it, the liquid from the pen goes away, and so does the mark. So that's just been my experience. But if you don't like friction pens, that's not a problem. We also have sew line, what are called trio colors. These have um, black, red, and white um, um, leads inside of them, and the lead in these is like chalk, so it wipes off with a damp cloth when you're done. So that's a trio, sew line trio. My new favorite is this one that is put out by Bowen, and it is a blue, sharp, sharp, sharp tip and lays down very nicely, doesn't expand too much. I mean, the line doesn't expand too much. And when I hit it with a spray bottle, it just goes away. So I'm very confident about this particular pen. We actually bought out everything that was at the distributor that we work with because we know that you guys will like these as well. 
Okay, so those are the three marking tools that we like, and um, you will need to figure out which of them you like the best. I, I try and work with all of them on different situations just to make sure that I really can confidently speak to you about which of the pens and marking tools I like. Okay, so that's marking tools. And um, speaking of marking tools, one of the things as a uh, quilter, a ruler work quilter, that you want to become familiar with is how to mark your quilt. So for example, if I'm marking a line and I want to lay that line down, I, I'm not going to do it right next to the ruler. Um, if I do it next to the ruler, when I get to my machine, I have a ruler work foot on which is a quarter inch away and it's not going to line up, especially on circles. It's not so much on the straight ones, but on the circle, it's not going to line up. So what we have are these stitching line discs. They come in a little bag. They're $10. They're not expensive. But what happens is the discs are all the same. They're all a quarter inch from the center. But they've got different size holes in the center so that depending on what size pen you use, it's not, you don't want the, for example, with this blue line pen, you don't want the largest one because it's going to wiggle around in the hole. And then you're not going to get a straight line or, you know, an accurate line. You want to just figure out which one it's going to go in and mark the quilt. So this is the one. This is the one that I'm going to use. And when I use it then, if I'm tracing a circle or I'm doing a straight line, I can mark exactly where that's going to be and I can see how to set my ruler a quarter inch away from that line. So that's what these stitching discs are, are good for. It's important that you draw the way that your needle is going to sew. So if you're not going to sew right next to the ruler, then you need to draw not right next to the ruler. So that's what these little discs are for, and they are incredibly, incredibly valuable for marking on your fabrics, especially when it comes to circles and curves. All right, so those are the stitching line discs, and we have dozens of these available, so any of you need them, just give us a holler and we'll get them out in the mail to you. We are not going to talk about rulers today. We'll talk about rulers in the next class when we get going. The, uh, the next thing I do want to talk about, though, is where to get your ideas from and how to translate those to fabric or to a quilt. So our favorite books tend to be ones where the designers give you ideas that you can work with and then show you how to apply the rulers to make those ideas work. So the one I'm working with right now, and the one that we base several of the designs on this quilt um, for from, is um, Amanda Murphy's, the orange book. I call it the orange book, but it's uh, Ruler Work Quilting Ideas, I think. Ruler Work Ideas? Whatever the title is. At any rate, in the pattern, it will tell you um, which page and which ruler we are talking about. So, for example, this one. We did one similar to this, and you can see it shows you how to actually do the drawing and then uh, gives you some suggested ideas. Now, what I want you to think about when you're doing this, so for example, this is block number one, or block A, block A. This is the first one that we're going to do, and I want you to reference in the book and look at how they draw it. Because when you're drawing it on here, I don't really want you to just trace it. You can. But you've got to make sure that your circles are going to match on the low side of the seam here. You don't want to get a flat spot. You actually want those circles to go all the way around. So you're going to use a ruler and a pen. And you can trace them, but you can also start learning how to draw these um, yourself. And so the book is going to go step by step by step. And then we've given you the idea on how to finish it. And then on um, several of the blocks, we've done things like we've added some fun little surprise elements in some of the areas just to show you that you can do more than just um, circles. A circle ruler will give you lots and lots of options and opportunities for quilting fun elements into a block. So that's how you're going to work with this. And... Once you get your quilt completely set up, then you can start marking. Now, here's the thing that's really important. These are 12 inch squares. The ones that we printed off, the ones that we gave you, are 12 inch squares. So 
it's really important that you watch your quarter inch seam allowances and you make sure that when these are pressed away, when these are pressed away, you make sure that you have 12 inches on the inside going both directions. This is a quilt where everything matters in order for you to get it right. So if you're not quite 12 inches, then you need to adjust your seam allowance to um, get that right. All right, so let's talk about threads for just a second because you can start gathering those for the next session. And threads are critical in the quilting process. Now, I like polyester threads, but I work mainly with um, superior threads, and I like their Omni, and I like their Omni Variegated. Those are pretty much the only two that I use. Um, I have used Aurifil on uh, some projects, but I have a little bit of a concern sometimes because it's a cotton thread. I'm not sure if those colors are going to bleed or not, where on polyester thread, I know for sure that they aren't going to bleed. They're uh, color fast and they don't bleed. Now, with that said, there are lots and lots of different kinds of polyester thread. And I'm going to try and explain this. If you have any questions, please email us and let us know um, that we did not make it as clear as we could. But polyester threads, by their nature, are stronger. So that's why we like them for quilting. But if I say polyester thread, um, you might go straight to Isocord or Glide or Floriani. Isocord, Glide, and Floriani, and several others, are also polyester, but they're shiny. And that's the big difference between um, Superior, Omni, and Omni Variegated, and Floriani, Glide, and Isocord. We want a flat finish thread. We want a flat finish thread. And in this particular case, what we want is a thread one or two shades darker than the background. So for example, I have a light gray background. This is the color gray that I'm going to use on my blocks for the quilting. And then I'm going to go to um, a burgundy that's two shades darker. That's two shades darker for the sashing. And I've already tried these out, um, laid them down, and they look just beautiful. So you could also, instead of doing a burgundy, you could also just transition the gray over to this too. But you want to, you don't want to um, make it so strong that it um, highlights all of your stitches that didn't lay down where they were supposed to, because this is a beginner. This is a beginning quilting primer. You're not an expert yet. You might be by the time we're done, but you're not an expert yet. So we want to hide it a little bit, but um, also have a little bit of contrast. And I would just really suggest that you think about doing the Omni thread, um, Superior threads. It's a poly wrapped poly core, but it has a flat finish. So those are some suggestions for threads. We're going to use for this exercise, we're going to use the same thread in the top and the bobbin. And one of the big discussions that we're going to have in the first video with the first three blocks is how to set your tensions and how to make sure that it looks as good on the back as it does on the front. Okay, so I think that is a good start for you guys to get going. Oh, a couple of other things to gather up. Number one, quilting gloves. It is spring here in Portland, Oregon, where we're filming. Costco has the rubber gloves on sale and available gardening gloves. I always buy a couple of packages of them and I go through them during the whole year. What's great about these is they have rubber on the fingertips, but they are open and breathable on the top. So I really like these for my quilting. The other thing that I want you to um, gather is your batting. And so let's talk about batting for just a second. Batting, um, the, the number one batting that I would not have you use is warm and natural. The standard cotton with a scrim in it that is just like cardboard. We don't want that. We want something that's going to give us a little bit of loft and really showcase that um, quilting. So what I'm going to suggest is that you um, look, for a, uh, look for a batting that has at least 80% cotton and 20% polyester. And what that does is it gives you a little bit of a, a loft. It gives you some uh, something for the thread to lay down into and pop that quilting up to the top. It's not gonna, uh, it's not gonna be, uh, it's not gonna be 100% polyester. 100% polyester is too hard to work with and makes it look, um, it shifts when you're quilting. So an 80-20 is a good thing to do. And 
um, save all of the end cuts off your quilts when you have them quilted because that's what the other thing I want you to do is I want you to um, I can't find mine I want you to make some quilt sandwiches and for each one of these blocks that we're working on we're going to do some practice before we get started on the actual quilt top so you're going to mark your quilt and then you're going to mark some muslin squares just plain old muslin squares you're going to mark the muslin squares the same so you're going to have nine muslin squares and you're going to have your quilt top with nine marked blocks and we're going to practice next time before we get started on the actual quilt all right that's your homework for the next couple of weeks to get ready and we will get these posted as quickly as they are available for you and just so you know, anyone who, anyone who has to make a purchase for supplies, whether it's the book or threads or um, um, anything, material, we're going to send you a um, Oribis paste, the original Bright Clean Quilt Soap for delicate fabric wash. This is what you're going to wash your quilt with when you're done. We have about 100 of these, so it's um, only for the first, it's it, while supplies last. These are uh, really, really great quilt soaps, and it's what you're going to wash your quilt with when we're all done quilting it. So check that out, and let us know if you have any questions. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel where these videos are posted, and we will look forward to seeing you again soon.